Principles of Strategic Risk and Financial Management. Okay, it's MAC 2602. A uh, MAC is very theoretical, but there's also quite a significant amount of calculations that you need to know. Um, looking at the content, there's 28 chapters and it's broken up into different sections. So sometimes they talk about strategy, sometimes they talk about risk, sometimes they talk about financial management where you need to do calculations. So it's a very, very comprehensive module. They've literally taken separate sections from other modules. So for example, UNISA has a financial management model, um, not model, module, and that financial management module is covering all of the time value of money, capital budgeting, etc. Okay, that's FIM. Then you get risk, so then UNISA has RSK uh, modules, and all those modules cover theory relating to risk. Okay, so what risk is, um, short-term insurance, long-term insurance, all of that. And then obviously UNISA has other modules looking at more the management side, which is more related to the strategy. Okay, what I've noticed here is they've basically taken from like different modules, okay, the, the individual separate modules, and they've almost like combined it into one, and they've created this MAC 2602. Right, so that's just some scope. There is a lot of content here. Okay, so I'm going to start by looking at the, um, let's close that first. Okay, so these notes I'll, I'll send to you um, later on when we cover the financial ratios and we look through the calculations. For now, I'm going to keep track of all our working as we go. Okay, and we're going to start obviously with the first few chapters. So chapter one to four in the actual textbook is all theory. It's looking at background information regarding strategy, how to create it, port to spire forces, all of that. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the information here in this particular book. Okay, principles of strategy, risk and financial management techniques. We're obviously looking at the first one. Okay, the double or triple zero one for this particular module. Okay, obviously we've looked at, oh, I've mentioned this. There are 28 chapters in the first book. You've got the first two parts. Okay, so obviously part one is looking at strategic planning and strategy and then they break it up into different sections then you've got part two which is the introduction to the finance okay so there's a little bit of calculations there time value of money um, looking at principles around how to calculate or budget there's quite a few calculations in terms of ratios and analysis and we'll look at all of that those are that would be topic two uh, well part two part two then you've got topic two topic three and then you've got a breakdown of the next study guide which is study guide 2 so the first book obviously co um, covers the first 14 study units and then we've got another 14 study units in the second book totaling 28 okay so there's a lot of theory lots and lots and lots of theory um, with some calculations scattered throughout the different sections okay that's just to give some scope to the actual course Right, so this week I'm going to try to cover the first four. It might seem a lot, but it's actually not that much. You'll see the theory is quite limited and it focuses primarily on strategy. Okay, the first four study units are covering the first 30 pages. Well, 40 pages up until the summary. So that's what I'm going to be looking at this week. So what I would suggest you do is obviously if you've got more time um, to go through the material yourself as well. So to read over the material, either do it before or after the classes, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. Um, you can obviously use the videos at a later stage if you need to revisit anything. The calculations are probably uh, more important because that needs practice. Okay, So you need to actually practice calculating certain amounts, um, substituting the amounts into the calculator. Um, question, Unam, do you have a financial calculator? Uh, yes, so I still have the, the same one that we were using, um, I DSC. think, in financial math. Yes, awesome. yes. Okay, so you've got the, just remind me what brand is it? Is it the HP or the Sharp? Um, it's the HP. It's so. the HP, okay, great. Okay, so at least I know which calculator you're using. So when we do calculations, um, I'll obviously do the workings with the HP calculator in mind. Okay, so let's start off with the first bit. You're obviously looking at introduction and overview. We just painted the scope. There's 28 modules we need to get through. When focusing on strategy, risk, and financial management, it's looking internal. So the reason why this is called MAC, okay, MAC is for management accounting. Okay, that's like the area that you're looking at. 
Management accounting is very detailed. Manac, okay, management accounting. It's detailed because we need to make decisions based on the business's operations. So everything that you cover here is applicable to a business in terms of its decision making. So you know accounting is obviously a way to create information in order to make decisions. So that's what the accountants do. They create the financial statements and then decision makers are going to be using them in order to, let's say, decide on which product is selling or they might decide, well, should we expand in a different area okay, or a different country uh, or what products are we going to stop producing? What products are we going to start producing? So there's a lot that goes into managing an, a business. Okay? And obviously, the bigger the business, the more complex it gets. But the basic principles stay the same. So that's what I've seen in this module is they focus mainly on principles. So, so they, they're literally giving you all the different skills or tools and, and knowledge and information that you need in order to apply in different areas. Okay, so if we're making a financial decision, then we need to know what those tools are. If we're looking at determining and, let's say, mitigating risk, then we need to know what the tools are there. Then you've obviously got strategy, and that's looking at planning, that's looking at the goal. Okay, what is the ultimate goal? What are we wanting to try to achieve? That's something to consider. And that's what the first four study units are looking at. So I'm going to quickly move down to this, which is the study unit number one, and start off by discussing this bit. Okay, so we're looking at strategic planning, okay, strategy. Let's start off by defining it. So I want to ask you, what do you think strategy is? When you hear the word strategy, what are you thinking of? <clears throat> when I um, when I think of the word strategy, I think of um, it's almost like a plan of how are we going to tackle specific, um, how do I say, like specific goals that we might have in a business. So um, I want to say perhaps um, the perhaps even let's say the direction in which we're going to take to get to those goals. So um, I think that uh, it's a, it's got a big how question how will we do it um to me though that's how i take it okay great so you're looking at strategy as the how so what are we going to do um yeah. is the strategy the how or is it more the um the plan because how remember there's different ways of getting to where you want to get but yeah. it doesn't always require the same strategy for example two people can do two different things and end up in the same place yes sir okay so uh, what happened this weekend massive sporting event um it was mayweather and um and uh what's this guy conor mcgregor's fight correct okay huge 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 global event Right, I'm sure millions of people around the world were watching that particular um, fight. Okay, it was a, obviously a boxing match okay, that took place in Las Vegas. And obviously you've got two different types of fighters. Okay, you've got an MMA, MMA guy. Okay, and then you've got a professional boxer. Right, obviously Floyd Mayweather is undefeated. 49-0 going into the fight. And obviously he won. And he's now 50-0 in terms of never having lost a fight. He's probably the best boxer of all time. Right, he's never lost a fight and he's 50-0 in terms of win. Okay, so how would you describe this strategy? Did Mayweather talk about his strategy in the post-match um, conference? Mm, I, didn't, I didn't quite follow the post-match conference, uh, the, the post-match um, uh, details, but... From uh, from my experience, and uh, even the last time that he fought with Pacquiao, um, everybody was talking about how his I suppose <laughs> his defense his his strategy is always a defensive strategy to to always be um, to to defend and hold his opponent until a specific point in the game or in the in the match, okay. and then turn it from there. Okay, yes. great. So yeah, that's a good answer. So um, obviously, 
you've discussed the, the Pacquiao uh, fight when Mayweather fought him, and obviously he went into that fight with a specific strategy. And um, the same thing happened with McGregor. He actually spoke about how McGregor was going to come hard at him in the, in the first three rounds, because obviously he's an MMM fighter, M -M 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 -A, mixed martial arts fighter, so he's, he's all aggressive and, and like getting into your face, trying to take you out in the first few rounds. But uh, Mayweather can withstand that like onslaught. So his strategy was actually to 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 like absorb the pressure at the beginning, and then wear wear the guy out, um, going for body shots and all of that. And then in the f um, in in the later rounds of the match, then starting to like attack and capitalize. And if and if you actually see. Um, McGregor in the later rounds, you can see how exhausted that guy is um, toward the end of the fight, where he like it almost looks like he's going to collapse. This guy looks so tired, and 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 Floyd is like he looks fresh, and he's still he's still um, attacking. So the thing is, he's actually a smart fighter. He's a clever fighter. He's not just going in, just swinging arms and and fists and all of that to try knock the guy out. He's actually thinking about his opponent. And he's almost like sizing the opponent up. So the reason why I'm discussing the fight is because you could probably say that Mayweather has a lot more experience in the boxing ring. Okay, he's obviously 49-0 for a reason. No one wins 49 and has absolutely no losses if they don't have a good strategy or if they aren't brilliant at what they do. So that's that's the, the whole point of this discussion is when focusing on strategy every opponent is different but if you can adapt and you can let's say discover what the weaknesses are and maybe what the strengths are you can then overcome those obstacles and that's what we're trying to do in management accounting is because nothing is for certain no one knows what's going to happen in the future there could be a recession maybe another bank is going to go bankrupt okay we had lehman brothers going bankrupt in 2008 the same thing can happen now okay who knows no one knows but if we have a specific strategy then we're going to react and we're going to plan accordingly so mayweather doesn't fight each bo uh, each fight to the same okay obviously every fight's a little bit different every opponent is a little bit different but um he's adapted his his game plan or his strategy game plan and that actually what helps him win is because he's a clever fighter and that probably makes him unique and special in in in, in a way that he he has that experience and obviously he's he's from a family of boxers okay so obviously his dad was a boxer as well he's obviously mayweather junior but um he has that ability to adapt and that's basically what strategy is strategy is looking more at the long term so keeping the long term in mind long term goal slash objective in mind okay that's strategy strategy is looking long term it's not really looking at the how because remember the how is looking at well how am i going to do it okay am i going to go for a jab or am i going to go for a right hook am i going to go for an uppercut what am i going to do to knock this guy out okay that's more the how but the strategy is well what do i want to do i want to win so if i'm going to win what do i need to do well i need to think long term okay if if mayweather went in as aggressive he probably wouldn't have won the fight because he might have got caught by one of those um, aggressive, let's say, uh, first three round attacks that um, McGregor was trying to force onto him. And that might have, the outcome might not have been the same, okay, if he was, let's say, as aggressive in the initial stages. So it's quite interesting. So when, when Mayweather was interviewed post-match, he spoke a lot about that. He spoke about how he was going to wear the guy out and then take the win in the in the later rounds and he spoke about how he was going to absorb the punches and 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 the uh, the the attack in the first three four five rounds and then after that capitalized so that he really had that game plan that was actually something he spoke about in the press um, conference um, and he mentioned that obviously he gets coaching as well and that was the game plan so they went into the fight with a game plan Obviously, McGregor, you could say, maybe had a game plan, but maybe didn't execute it as well. Okay, so it, it's difficult to say, oh, uh, um, let's, uh, how can I put it, the, the strategy, it's difficult to say which strategy is the best. Okay, maybe a different strategy might have won, 
or lost the fight. But it's always something to consider. So the, the strategy needs to be focused on long term. It's always something that you're wanting to achieve. Okay, what is the end goal? What does the company want to achieve? Okay, later on you'll see they talk about the primary goal of the business and what the business needs to do long term. Okay, I just want to discuss it now because it's important value. Okay, businesses need to maximize value over profit. If they maximize value over profit, then they should become profitable over the long run. Okay, that's what we're looking at here in terms of financial management and management accounting. Okay, we're looking at the ability for the firm to maximize value. It's always going to be looking at value. And that's why when you do certain calculations, time value of money, when you look at net present value, and when you do um, ratio calculations and, and, and so on, it's always going to be looking at this, the value part of it. Okay, how much does the company stand to gain from a specific project or investment versus how much is it going to cost? Right, and that's something called risk versus reward. Okay, that's probably the most important underlying principle that embodies all the decision making when businesses need to decide on what are we going to do. Okay, are we going to go with this project or that project? Something to consider. So coming back to the notes here, you'll see they break study guide one and two into different parts. Number one is looking at strate strategy, okay, strategic planning. Two is looking at introduction. Okay, this is more like your calculations. Three is looking at the funding. Right, so where do we get the finance? Okay, and then number four is the risk management. So if I had to summarize this, number one would be looking at like the vision, okay, or the goal. What is it that we need to achieve? What is the strategy? What is this company wanting to do? Does this company want to be the biggest company in the world in terms of making the biggest profit? Or does this company want to be um, renowned for giving the most to its, um, let's say, customers? Okay, so not, not chasing profit, but maybe looking at making a difference. Okay, there's always two things that we need to look at. Um, the company's strategy in terms of what do they want to achieve financially, or what do they want to achieve in terms of legacy? Okay, so what is this company going to be remembered for? Okay, what is this individual going to be remembered for? Right, and then you've got part two which is looking at more the, uh, I like to call it tools, okay, or techniques. Okay, and obviously tools and techniques is the how-to. Right, so how am I going to measure um, time value of money in terms of present value, future value, etc. Okay, I'm glad you've done DSC before because if you've done DSC, you've actually done 1630, which is the most difficult um, financial calculation module there is in in the UNISA um, um, let's say um, choice of, of subjects um, so that gives you a bit of an advantage because when I talk about like time value of money present value future value annuities um, all of that you have that background you have that knowledge okay so you'll probably find some of the later sections very easy for example chapter 3 will be a piece of cake because you've done DSC 1630 if you haven't for those for those students that haven't it's obviously more challenging because they're seeing those concepts for the first time please look at the finance okay so where do I get finance where do I invest funds it's going to be looking at a bit of the decision making okay so now where we actually take some action okay what are we actually going to do so one is well what do we want to achieve two is giving us the tools and techniques to hopefully achieve something, to do something. Three is, well, let's take our resources and let's make a decision. Okay, are we going to do this or do that? And then the last part is, well, how do we manage the risk? Okay, because are you going to want to invest all your resources in a very high risk project? What do you think? Is that a good idea? Well, I don't think so, but then I think they would probably look at the return as well. Um, okay, that's a good answer. So you, you're saying that it depends on the return. And also, yes. it would actually depend on this, the goal or the vision. Okay, so what is your goal? Are you looking to invest long-term or short-term? If you're investing more long-term, well, then taking more risk isn't going to be too much of a problem if you're investing for, let's say, 10, 20, 30 years. But if I'm only going to be investing over the short-term, 
then we need to be more careful because now certain things are more risky than others and that's the last bit is the risk management okay so obviously have a goal have a vision then have the tools and techniques to do something okay then number three is well use your resources either invest those resources or manage those resources in order to create value and then take a decision where am I going to invest this capital and then the last step is now how do we manage the risk okay so now if I'm investing in this capital uh, so for example if I'm buying a car okay that vehicle needs to be insured okay that's risk management risk management is insuring the vehicle okay managing and investing funds would be buying the vehicle okay, or buying the property okay if I buy a property same thing right the property might be damaged it might be um, uh, burgled okay so it might it might uh, there might be a robbery or something like that and the property will obviously lose value perhaps so that's risk management okay maybe security let's put in some burglar bars let's put in some cameras fingerprint recognition etc okay so that's pretty much what you're looking at here you you're going to be looking at different sections but I always want you to remember what the focus is okay the focus is always on trying to achieve some goal or trying to achieve an objective Okay, and obviously in finance, the key objective is this, maximizing value. Okay, and we maximize value by investing, okay, by starting new projects, by um, buying new products okay, to sell, or by making new products to sell, depending on what the actual um, business is doing okay, in terms of operations. Okay, is that scope? Then they give you a little bit over here, looking at study unit one. Okay, we'll obviously go through study unit one, two, and, and four. One, two, three, and four. And the first bit is looking at this. Development of the organization's strategy. Okay, so what are we focusing on here? What do you think? Uh, I think it's the same thing. Like, um, uh, I want to say leading to, I think the components lead to the strategy. So things that we need to know. Um, I, I got a chance to read through. So it's got Good. things like vision yes. in there. So um, so like I said, things that are, that, that are leading to towards um, or things that, encompass, things that encompass the strategy or things that support the strategy at the end of the day. That's perfect. That's a brilliant answer. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad you had a chance to go through this ahead of time. It does help quite a bit because at least then um, you, you're familiar with some of the, um, let's say, um, ideas that are being expressed in each of the chapters. Okay, so definitely I agree with what you mentioned. It's like the background information. Okay, it's the it's the underlining stuff. It's like the it's like the it's the underlying underlying, let's say, reasons. Okay, it's, it's looking at the behind the scenes type of thing. Okay, so why are we doing what are we doing? That's the key. Okay, so the first bit, as you said, is looking at like that vision, okay, that, that goal, that objective. So they'll, you'll see they talk about concepts, okay, defining concepts. Why do you think a company needs to define concepts? What, what is its purpose? Uh, defining concepts. Uh Oh wow! Uh, I think uh, I think it, 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 it's to make sure that the company knows what they're doing and uh, what their goal at the end of the day is. Um, it, Why? Uh, I think it also uh, because um, it actually helps in my. I believe that it will probably help in being able to uh, to alloc allocate costs um, correctly. Okay, possibly. Uh, if, but but think if, about this: if, who runs the company? the CEOs. Okay, so board of directors, CEO, fine. Okay, so they're the main like decision maker in the business. But ultimately, yes. companies are run by who? Uh, stakeholders. Stakeholders so or have, people? So management, um, stakeholders. staff. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's perfect. So if you're looking at people and stakeholders, do you agree, are people always going to have the same values or the same morals no no not they won't. okay so you've covered no. the ethics um module that's um cas um 1501 i think it is so y you know what ethics are in terms of doing the right thing okay you know what should be done and you know what shouldn't be done and obviously different people can have different let's say 
uh, philosophies. Okay, so are we going to do things for the greater good or are we going to do things because it's right? Okay, so for example, is killing a murderer right? Well, maybe if we're looking at protecting other people versus is killing right or wrong. Okay, obviously killing period is wrong. Okay, we shouldn't be murdering and killing people. But if we're murdering and killing a murderer, does that make it right? Do you see where I'm going with that? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so the key here is defining concepts. Why must a company do that? It's because everybody needs to be on the same page. Okay, all the stakeholders yeah. within the business need to know what is this company, like what does the company stand for? That's basically what you're trying to, to uncover. Okay, so when I talk about these big companies in the world, can you think of an example? What, what big company can you give me as an example? Mm, uh, Microsoft. Microsoft. Okay, so if we're talking about Microsoft, how would you describe its, let's say, its reason for existing? Uh, I believe perhaps they're trying to to not just be the leader, but to the the leader in in uh, in tech support and tech, um, uh, you know, I don't know, like a computer computer solutions. I think they want to be the the leader in that. Okay, so, um, so definitely they want to be a leader in that particular industry. In software, sorry. Software, sorry yeah. Yes, okay, yes. so would you would you say they've got a specific, let's say, value uh, system or, or culture? I believe so. They should have. Yeah, they should. Um, and I think it should come from all... where? It should come from a mission statement. And the mission yes. statement is basically going to outline that vision. Okay, so a mission statement would be taking a goal and like defining it. Okay, what is the actual goal? Right, so um, it's interesting that you mentioned Microsoft. I don't know what their vision is, but we can check. Let's just type in Microsoft mission statement, and let's see what we get. Okay, so here's the mission statement, December 30th, 2016. At Microsoft, our mission is to enable people and businesses throughout the world to realize their full potential. We consider our mission statement a commitment to our customers. Okay, that is quoted from December 30, 2016. Okay, what is Microsoft's vision? Okay, um, Microsoft or Visio, oh, vision, is a, um, okay, this is, no, that's, that's the software that, that doesn't help us. And about Microsoft, okay, here, maybe this might be better to look at. Okay, so we believe in what people make possible. Our mission is to empower every person, every organization on the planet to achieve more. Right, so, have a look at that mission statement. Here's it. We believe in what people make possible. Our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Is there, it, does the word technology appear anywhere there? No, not at all. Not at all. But now, how can a technology company have a, a vision like that? I think the, 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 their main focus is um, on people. So um, I think, uh, in in my opinion, every business model, or every good business model, caters for for um, for the user and the and the person. So it's uh, creating an an, an experience um, around your brand or your product, rather than to focus, you know, specifically on the product. So uh, I like to say to like some of my friends that you could have the best product. Um, in terms of quality, but if your experience, if your customer doesn't experience or doesn't have a good memory or good experience with your with your brand or your product, True. the chances of them coming back are a lot less. Correct. You're right. Okay, because um, at the end of the day, it's all about the people and what their view is on that brand. Okay, so Microsoft obviously does a lot of different things. Do you agree? It's not only software. Yes. Okay, I mean, they've, they've started making their own devices as well. I mean, you've got um, special uh, Windows phones and all sorts of um, tech that's making think, people's lives easier, right? They even purchased Nokia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Nokia actually, um, they're bringing out new Nokia phones that are actually branded separate to um, oh, the oh, Windows okay. phones. 
Yeah, it used yeah. to be Nokia Windows, and, and it used to be part of the... Well, I think Nokia phones had the Windows operating system on it. Yes. Yeah, but, but now um, the newer phones... I've seen quite a few adverts about Nokia more recently than I have in the past. So I think they've probably tried to relaunch that company or that brand. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the vision. So do you agree Microsoft's vision isn't to make profits? Yes. Okay, Microsoft's vision is actually more than that. It's believing in what people make possible. Okay, so they, they're focusing on the individual, okay, the person. And they know that people have potential. But it's technology that helps people to become um, successful or to become more. Okay, that's what they're trying to do, achieve more. Our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. More. That's what we're looking at. So you can only achieve so much, okay, with the things that you've got. With Microsoft, with their software, with their technology, with X, Y, and Z, you're going to be able to achieve more just because you've got their product or you've got their software or you've got their whatever the case might be. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, yes. Okay, so that's why when looking at defining concepts, the reason why that's important is because companies need to have an underlining, let's say, um, purpose. Okay, that's, that's the best way I can put it, is purpose. Right, finding the company's purpose. What is the company supposed to be doing? What is the objective? What is the vision? What is the values? What is the philosophy? All of that. Okay, it all comes down to this. What is it that the company is standing for and what is it that the company is going to do? Okay, so that's what Microsoft's purpose is. Microsoft has defined their purpose as trying to help people to achieve more. Okay, that's basically what they're trying to do. So you'll see in the introduction, they talk about concepts here. They talk about the mission. They talk about the values. Okay, do you think the mission and the values are going to affect our strategy? Yes, I think so. Definitely. Right, how will it affect the strategy? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I think if um, if everybody knows, uh, if everyone's on like the same page as to, um, you know, what we're trying to do and what, um, how do I put it? If, we're, if we as an organization are on the same page um, about what to do, I think, um, or how to do it, or yes. what to do, we're able to, to be able to, um, to have a better goal or, or better game plan um, at the end of the day. So I think uh, the, the mission and the core values, they, they, they certainly will, at the end of the day, um, affect the, the, the strategic objectives. Okay, that's good. So, so give me an example um, of, let's say, a person's value and what their strategy would be. Mm. So, what, like a personal value? Okay, let me do this. I think let's relate this to your, your company. Okay, so you're obviously a photographer, right? Yes. Okay, so I want to know, what is your vision? What is your mission? Uh, you know, I don't have any of those things. But um, uh, my vision, of course, is to be um, the best the the best photographer out there okay, and to provide so quality. So now, yes. what does that involve? Because everyone wants to be the best. Yes, sir. So now you need to define that. See, what are the values? What makes the best photographer? A good quality product. Okay, so core value would be quality product. Yes. What else? What else would you value? So you would value quality. What else would you value? Uh, I'd, uh, a good um, customer client relationship, okay, and so, also um, CR, CRM, customer relationship management. Yes. What else? And then also having um, a quality product at reasonable prices. Okay, so pricing affordability. So um, how can we talk about maybe costs or pricing? Maybe cost pricing. Okay. What else? What else would you value? Uh, what makes the best photographer? Hmm. Uh, 
just knowing and uh, knowing what to what to do at the right time um i think it also planning planning goals uh, is very important in what i do so coming prepared for for specific shoots um knowing what to use for specific kind of shots that you might need okay. um yeah so so b- b- from camera to lenses to to lights yes. to setting and so on and so forth okay so so that's those are values so those are all values that you would have to embody okay to be the best photographer in terms of the mission though what does photography actually do for people well it creates memories for yeah, them. it captures memories captures time yes Okay, so obviously we can never ever get the same moment again, but the only thing that we can do is like preserve that moment in time by taking a photo or by taking a video, and that actually captures memory. So, as a photographer, maybe your mission would be to capture people's lives or, or to capture um, different people's best moments in time, or to. Um, to capture happiness in a moment or I don't know to like I'm trying to think of like a mission that that goes beyond just offering quality offering affordable pricing offering good customer service good client management offering planning and professional there's there has to be more than that so the mission would be like that that one core purpose what is it that you're trying to achieve? What is the purpose? That's why when we looked at Microsoft, their purpose was just to do what? Help people achieve more. Okay, obviously they worded it a bit longer and they added a few other words and things like that into the actual um, uh, mission statement. But so, at the end of it, they're just looking at purpose. W- what are they trying to do? So as a photographer, what are you trying to do? Capture good pictures. You're trying to... Yeah. Creating everlasting memories. There we go. That's perfect. So that could be the mission. The mission could be creating everlasting memories. Okay, or capturing everlasting memories, or or capturing moments in time, or or, or something like that. Okay, do you agree the strategy will then be linked to that mission, okay, or to that value? Right, so if your let's assume that your mission wasn't to capture moments in time. And your mission was to make a profit. Okay? If that was the mission. In terms of strategy, what do you think you're going to be doing as an individual? If you're trying to make a profit only. Yes. I think uh, you would be trying to cut your costs um, and make sure that you preserve um, any of your... Or any of your or any of your profit that you make, so okay. you, you'd probably actually find that you have um, actually you'd, you'd probably be trying you'd probably have a higher costs um, or a higher there's a word that I'm trying to look for uh, your your quotation would probably have uh, a lot more costs involved and um, a lot or perhaps the the client would be paying more for your product. Um, as opposed to you delivering as much as you can to fit, so um, so as much as your 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 your, your service is maybe ten thousand rand per hour, but your work is not worth that same amount because you're just trying to make a profit. You yes. you're just trying to I don't know, yes okay, trying so to do I don't you, know, I want to say take people's money. Your are going to be very different than if your purpose was more noble. Yes, yes. Yes. Sir. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with making a profit as long as it's ethical. Okay, you're not breaking any rules or laws or anything like that. You're not harming people in doing what you're doing, um, but you're making a profit. Okay, but if you're just making a profit, but off the back of people, meaning unethical, meaning let's harm people, okay, in order to make a profit then there's obviously a problem there with the mission and the purpose. Okay, because remember, yes. strategic objective, right, your objectives are going to be based on what you believe in. Okay, so if you just believe in profit, 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 
okay? There's nothing going to stop you from, let's say, doing something bad in order to make a profit. Okay, so fraud and corruption. Okay, you, you covered that in CAS, C-A-S. Okay, the ethics, the ethics yes. unit. Okay, so certain individuals may profit unethically, okay, because of fraud and corruption, and that creates a problem. Right, but if they don't have the right values, if their value is just profit, well then, you can't really fault them for, for achieving what they're wanting to. Okay, because think about that. If your value is to make a profit, okay, if that's the value, well then, there could be different things that you'd be doing in order to achieve the goal. Okay, not all of it might be in the best interest of other people. Okay, which is problematic. Versus, let's talk about maybe... Um, Instead of profit, maybe your your goal is, um, as you said, maybe f uh, taking photos, so um, capturing memories. Okay, so do you agree, if we're focusing on capturing the best memories in time, or best moments in time, okay, are we going to be profitable? Well, probably. Okay, because remember, your mission is something more than just rands and cents. Okay, you're actually wanting to capture the best moments in time. And it doesn't matter how, like, how much cost is, or how much it's going to cost you to do, but you're going to achieve that. You're, you're on a mission. Okay, your mission is you're going to take the best photos in this world, okay, and that's the mission. Right, we're going to do what we take, we're going to do what it takes to get the best moment in time. Okay, if it costs us a lot, it's going to cost us a lot. We're not worried about the profit. We're just worried about capturing the best moment. Okay, because that's more than just profit. Okay, it's, it's actually capturing the best moments. And the funny thing is, if you're the photographer capturing the best moments, you're probably going to achieve this, profitability. Okay, because the best people win. Okay, Floyd Mayweather won on... Um, Saturday, well, early Sunday morning, because he's the best. Okay, he 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 he's not. Um, yes, he obviously got paid a lot. Okay, to to fight, and obviously he won a lot from the actual fight, having won. But that that probably wasn't his only motivation. Okay, his only motivation was probably to be the greatest boxer of all time. Okay, fifty zero. Okay, no one else can really say that in terms of. Um, I think he surpassed someone. I forget who. Um, there was some um, boxer that also had 49-0, um, and he obviously surpassed that on, on Sunday. But that's probably, I mean, I don't know the guy, okay, but I'm just trying to, um, how can I say, um, use examples to express what the mission and values are. Okay, obviously, if the mission was profit, it might have been a little bit different, okay, in terms of the mission rather being the goal. Okay, because think about it. If you were a boxer, if you really wanted to win the fight, <laughs> you could probably try um, injure your opponent, like maybe like bite your opponent or, or I don't know, um, uh, kick your opponent where you know you shouldn't or, 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 or punch them in, in an area that you're not supposed to and things like that. So obviously, that's not allowed. It's against the rules. But if you are focusing just on winning the fight, well, then maybe you're going to do certain things in order to to achieve certain goals okay versus um, following the rules and then let your skills okay speak for themselves basically okay and that's basically what floyd mayweather did on on sunday he, he just he outskilled the guy okay his skills are just so much better he he's been in so many more fights so his his ability to um let's say predict what's going to happen uh, is is a lot greater than the other guy Okay, obviously the other guy comes from a different sport. Okay, so in that area, he would be one of the best. Okay, but obviously when it comes to boxing, you've obviously got Floyd Mayweather being the best. Okay, being the um, the most skilled. Okay, in that department. All right, so that's important. So the textbook here describes a mission statement as the core purpose of the organization. Okay, and I, and see again, I want to I want to relate this to you. Okay, so what is your mission statement? Uh, let's. Let's create one then, if you don't have one. So come, Unam. I want to know, as a photographer, what's yes. the mission statement? Can you think of one? Mm. Um, my core purpose, especially when I started, was to 
have obviously the best images, the, the best quality images. That was my, my biggest thing, the best quality images at an affordable price because I wanted, uh, when I started, I really wanted to cater for the lower end of the market, uh, especially because the lower end of the market, they never really got the opportunity to get um, really high quality, beautiful images that could possibly be printed at a later stage. Um, you'd always find that models or you know, people, uh, everyday people would would have images, but they weren't of the best quality. As though, you know, they were that they were being almost that they were going to be seen on a on a on a on a magazine or anything like that. So that was my main. That's why I really really took on photographers because I really want to provide beautiful quality images at an affordable price. That was the biggest thing. Okay, great. So you, you're talking about this in the past tense. You say when I started and uh, when I when I first yes. <laughs> started. Now, ha- so does that mean it's changed? No, no, no. It hasn't changed. It's just that um, I think uh, as time has gone past, uh, I've gotten uh, my, my not that my target market, but my client base or my clientele has moved from that to being a lot more high corporate end, um, you know, brands. And as much as it's still it's still the same high quality images that I'm trying to produce, but obviously at the same time, I think there has been a bigger factor of that I want to get paid just as much as the best photographer out there because I produce just as good, just a good work because, you know, as opposed to saying, well, um, I'll undercut my costs to make sure that um, I, I have the best product because that's what I did at, at first. I would always make sure that I'd, I'd find myself, quite honestly, um, uh, under under pricing just to make sure that um, I can develop a client base, uh, like I said, the lower end of the market, to secure that lower end of the market, and also to find that um, I can try to develop customer loyalty um, with that. So. Now, like I said, as much as I don't have those clients as much as I did before, um, I have different clients that can afford to pay me, you know, a lot more for the for the for the for the quality and the kind of photography that I'm doing. So, um, yeah, it's it hasn't changed so much, but it's just that, like I'm saying, like the client base has changed. So. Yeah. Um, I don't go into if I'm going to shoot for Adidas. I'm not going to say to them, "Well, oh yeah, your your budget is, you know, twenty thousand rand for this." Well, don't worry, I'll give it to you for five, because that's what I used to do if I was shooting for Anthony. You know, I'd say to him, "Oh no, you know, um, look, Ant, um, usually I'd charge you know two two thousand rand, but for you it's okay. Like I'll just charge one point five is okay." Or what is your budget? You've got five hundred rand. Let's let's see what we can do for five hundred bucks. So that's why I'm saying a lot of things. Why I'm speaking it in the past tense. It's just the the different the changes in in demographics that have happened. Okay. Yeah. So not all clients are the same. So obviously yeah. you're catering you're catering for different markets. Um, sounds like you've got obviously clients in both areas. So more on the lower end and then also on the higher end as well. Yes. Okay, so that's good. So obviously you had to develop the strategy, right? And the strategy would have come from this mission statement. Okay. So your un- your underlying purpose is obviously to to almost like um, sort of give back in a sense where you're trying to create all these images for people that might not be able to uh, necessarily maybe afford them, perhaps. Okay. That was what you initially went with. Okay. And then obviously things have changed now because you've 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 developed your skill and now obviously companies are willing to pay more for that product. Right. That was the first bit. The next bit is looking at values. What is a value? They talk about a principle here. So how would you define that? Mm, Well, um, I'm very, very, very big on professionalism. So um, arriving early, 30 minutes early to every shoot. um, I treat every every customer and every client the same. So, you could be paying me, you know, 20 bucks. You could be paying me 20,000 and it doesn't matter. Um, professionalism is very, very important. So like I said, arriving early, being on time. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 
making sure that you that you provide um, everything on everybody that I that I that I uh, provide a service to. They get their images on a memory stick. Um, they get the opportunity to 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 request printing. I can print your images for you. Um, so, uh, but the, yeah, the, the, those are the principles. So, uh, behavior um, uh, plays a big part of it. And like I said in the beginning, creating a good customer experience. Um, people looking back at me, at my service and saying, "Wow, he was quite a delight to have." Yeah. Um, I think I wouldn't mind paying for his services again. Yeah, see, that's really good. So why do you have those values and principles? What would you say it stems from? Was it the way you were brought up? Because obviously different individuals have different views. So your view is, is, is sounds really, really, really good and positive, but obviously not all people are the same. So where would you say your yeah. values and principles have come from? Well, they've come from mainly my upbringing, yes. um, my parents, uh, how they brought me up. Um, I've, another large part of it is I think the, the school that I went to, um, you know, I went to a boys school, so I developed uh, a lot of the, you know, the yes, sir, yes, no. like I don't, it's not pretentious. I don't think about, oh yes, I have to say it. Like it's, it's just something that was instilled in us, um, from, from the time we arrived in grade eight okay. up until matric. Um, and also the uh, biggest thing that, that really made me want to, keep it up was the fact that um, a lot of people and this was also one of the bigger reasons one of the well a minor reason but one of the big re- one of the minor re- minor reasons why um, I I went for a lower lower end of the market was because lower end of the market was at the time was not really tapped into and the people who had um, had requested photography skills or services from certain people who were perhaps maybe even higher end photographers at some point, um, they would always talk of a bad experience. So, um, uh, you know, the, he arrives late. He doesn't, he, you know, he he treats he treats us as though, or she treats us as though, we are really paying him less than, you know, a, another client or a, a, a higher end client. So that was like a big. Um, that was my gap where I felt like this is where. If if I can if I can be better than these guys, not just in terms of taking pictures, but also in creating an experience for my customers, yeah. then I could, like I said, create customer loyalty and um, from there uh, generate uh, more profits through that. Yeah, see that's good. See, because you you're looking at, at at what what resonates with you as as values and principles. Okay, because things like that can't change. Okay, so obviously you mentioned upbringing that obviously affects the type of person that you are. Okay, so that's good. That's values. Then we've got the word vision. What does vision refer to? The future. Yes. Okay, so vision is basically the picture that you have in your mind's eye of what you think success is going to look like. Okay, so what would your vision be then for this career in photography? Like, what, how would you describe the, the future? Okay, but obviously based on today. But the vision is what we've got to, uh, let's say, strive for. It's that it's that sort of like that that ambition. It's like having something more to like strive towards. So, how would you describe that? What is the vision? Uh, the vision it's to well, not just to get more high end clients, but I'd like to have uh, more. I'd like to be a, a published photographer because so on on magazines, billboards, etc. So that's the main main goal. Because I, I, as much as I, I do shoot for, for higher end clients, but it's usually for like their websites. Uh, so social media is like a big, big call. Big, it's a a big part of what I do now. So social media images. Um, I, I last week or the week before that we were at we were shooting Fashion Week, Mercedes Benz Fashion Week. I was shooting for a brand called Superbalist. I don't know if you know it. So, but then it was it was. For their images on their social media platform. Okay, and, and how um, did you how did you get these opportunities then? Because obviously you had this vision, so this vision must have materialized in some way. So what what were the steps taken? Can you can you identify that um, that that how can I say the um, like the seed the seed that created this vision? Mm, 
it's it's quite hard, but um, I always attribute uh, anything that I have to the people that that uh, like the images and they share, they they repost um, because um, I think in the industry that I am in, there are you know it's a it's an industry filled with many competitors, so it's very easy and it's it's um it's it's not like print media, you know, if you go into print media you must be saying something very meaningful to want to print it. Yeah. Um, for me, it's you. It, it's so quick. Um, you could go online now and you probably don't spend more than two seconds looking at an image. So yeah. um, the people who like the, 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 the pictures and the people who shared the images, and the part, I think another big part was the people who were in those spaces giving me an opportunity. So, um, like, like I said, I was just so that friend, um, you know, whenever she has an opportunity, she would uh, refer me. And I think a big part of it is referral. So people saying, oh, man, I like his work. Um, they refer them or let me choose him. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the people who like my images, and, um, obviously that company saying, yes, we don't mind paying him because, you know, his images are beautiful and they are in line with what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So, so yeah, obviously it sounds like um, your networking has also been a good part in terms of maybe your principles as well. So maybe being friendly to people, having referrals, and etc. So that does also help as well. Okay, so that's the third one. Then we've got strategy here. Okay, so now describe your strategy. What would you say the strategy is? Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I must describe it. I'm sorry, sorry. I yeah, hear you what this. Would you say the, um, the, yeah, how would you describe the strategy? What are you trying to do? What is the... Um, see, when they talk about strategy, they're talking about... It's almost like a... Um, how can I say? like Almost like a checklist, if you will. Okay, strategy. So, are we going to do this or are we going to do that? Okay, that's the strategy. We're either going to go in this direction or that direction. So, maybe before you, you, you discuss yours... Um, let me just show you the Mayweather versus McGregor. Mostly Floyd Mayweather gives bold. We've been doing this for 21 years. A boxing um, okay, so this is the, uh, what website is this? Telegraph.co.uk. And in this particular video, they spoke about the post-match. Well, that's post-match, but they spoke about the actual events of the match. Okay, so obviously... Floyd has become okay one of the best boxers, or probably he still is. He he always was very good, but he's definitely undisputed as being the fiftieth victory in terms of his unbeaten record, being the best. Okay, one of the best all time um, greats of that particular sport. And obviously, we're looking at the series of punches that he took in the early points. See, they even mentioned that. He got off to a flying start, throwing a series of punches at the 40-year-old and scoring a few early points. Okay, that's how the match went. Right at the beginning, Floyd Mayweather had to withstand all of the um, um, punches, all of the attacks. Right, And obviously, later on, he came back um, and he actually stamped his authority. See, here we go. Mayweather, meanwhile, struggled to stamp his authority on the contest, receiving blows to the head and failing to make an impact on the 29-year-old opponent. Okay? Then, things changed. Mayweather is known to be patient and started to find his groove in the fifth round. Pushing the Irishman back, Mayweather landed a number of blows to the body and his pressure started to pay off in the sixth as the Irishman seemed to tire. Okay, so you can see he went into it with a strategy. He, he knew what he was going to do. So basically, if we had to like relate it to this, strategy could be, well, number one, withstand the early rounds. Okay, get through the attack. Okay, the, the initial um, massive attacks coming from the opponent. Then number two is maybe endure. Okay, have the endurance to, to save energy, to, to punch economically and so on. And then number three, when the opponent is tired, then go in for the kill. So... That's strategy. Strategy is more, um, how can I say, it's almost more defined, if you will. Okay, it's it's defining the what are we going to do. So, 
um, if we're going to go that route okay what is the first step what is the second step what is the third step okay so I want you to do the same thing but I want you to do the same thing for your um, photography business so how would you describe the strategy mm, well um, I'd have to start well speaking from past tense um, I had to firstly uh, establish myself as uh, almost to say a household name so um, I really really had to shoot um, a lot more um, street style images um, I had to shoot a lot of graduations a lot of uh i remember the, what, like um baby showers i had to do a lot of baby showers um because the end of the the the, the end goal uh, like i said is to obviously see myself um being a published photo photographer so on magazines and so on so to create um to establish myself as a house of the name so to get the word out there that i am this guy so i had to like i said shoot a lot of things that I didn't want to shoot. Um, nothing that compromised my moral values, however. But a lot of things that were not particularly exciting to me. But the one thing that I found joy in was obviously creating creating content and uh, giving clients quality product for affordable prices. Yeah. And um, through that, um, that's how then I got referrals. But... The, the the how how I got to where I am now was lots of shooting things that did not excite me yeah. particularly okay, up until so, this point and even yeah so yes. is there a strategy now you you're always referring to the past so has the strategy changed no I I think the, it hasn't changed as much so but you see like uh, the difference is you see. You know when you start out something when you start you know as a business like for example with you 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 have to advertise a lot more you you find yourself you know you you really have to be in people's faces so that people are, are you know they they know about your business they they know about what you offer and so on and so forth up until such a point people find um where people are comfortable with your skill and they say oh wow actually he's really good from there, you you find that you're not doing as you're not searching for as much business as as much business searching for you. So um, uh, and that this was also an earlier conversation where remember when you when you were saying to me um, you don't post as much anymore. Um, I remember I used to have to post about two or three times a day or two three times a week, just to make sure that my my name is out there and yeah. you know I'm creating a buzz to make sure that at least I know that at the end of the month. I've got a couple of clients under my belt. Well, but Friday, Saturday. Oh, but it's it's and um, sorry, I'm losing, I, I'm losing your audio. To teach me. Remember, you're still there. I lost your audio there. I find that I don't have to. Because I was working at a, I was uh, working at a rate that was just not conducive. I, uh, as much as I was making money, but um, I found that the best thing that, that that that's worked now is that I do less work for. Um, you know, so it's so there are less clients that pay more, or I I don't shoot. I used to shoot every single day, so I used to shoot every single day, even though I was studying. So I'd make sure on a Monday I had a shoot, Tuesday I had a shoot, Wednesday every single day, and perhaps maybe rest on a Sunday. Whereas now it's to try to accommodate my studies and to accommodate everything else. So I had to change the whole business model, the whole business plan, and the whole. The way that I operate to be able to um, accommodate the kind of life that I am trying to live now. So yeah. that's why a lot of things that when I say, when I speak of how I got to where I am, you find that I did a lot more to get where I am. But now I do a lot just to sustain, you know. You know, I hear what you say. It, it, it obviously makes sense because obviously all 
all things come with time. So the strategy is yes. key. You need to obviously have some sort of um, uh, like to-do list. So obviously you mentioned in the past you had more on your to-do list than you do now. The, the list has changed quite a bit. But the strategy, um, yes, in terms of mission, values, and vision is still the same. But obviously the way that you're doing things now are a little bit different. And, and that's the key. So obviously strategy is very dependent yeah. on what are you trying to achieve. Yes, okay, yes. So there's two or three different strategies here. They talk about cost leadership, they talk about differentiation, and they talk about pricing. So where would you put where would you put your business? Are you looking at cost, meaning are you trying to give your clients the cheapest offer that has the most value? Or are you looking at differentiation, meaning charging maybe a premium but they can't get a service anywhere else? Or are you going in terms of price strategy? So trying to maybe um, penetrate a specific market or trying to attract a certain client. So where would you put yourself here in terms of these three categories? Cost, leadership, differentiation or pricing? What is your strategy? Mm, I think now I think it's more of perhaps maybe a pricing strategy. Before it was definitely a cost leadership strategy but i think now it's a lot more um because there's excuse me there's um there's very little there's nothing different that i that, that i supply um anything you know anything amazingly different that i supply to my to my competitors but the only major difference would perhaps be you know cost but i mean the, the pricing but that it's still not like it's not a, it's not a it's not a big enough a, a differentiation that a client would maybe pick someone else, but yeah. So I, I just think um, depending on what I do, um, I, I I employ a different pricing strategy. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna charge the same. I'm not gonna charge uh, I'm not gonna charge Anthony the same thing I charge, you know, to 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 shoot for Edcon or something. So I think. Uh, uh, that's sort of where I am now. Uh, the, the 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 quality of work is still the same, however. But uh, I think it's trying to trying to get a good feel on what to price, when to price, um, the best value for for money and okay. best value for what I. Okay, so in in terms of yeah, so that's the current pricing strategy. You're going with that rather than cost leadership versus differentiation. Do you think yes. there's a best strategy? Is there such a thing? Mm, I, I mean, for me, when I read this, I, I definitely felt like uh, the, uh, the 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 cost leadership strategy was probably the the best because I mean, Why? everybody wants to know that, especially as a cli- as a as a as a client or a customer, you want to know that that um that you're probably getting the best for less. Yes. You know, so. Okay, um, so that was interesting. That and maybe the reason why you're going with this one is because maybe of the recession, perhaps, so the economic environment. Yes. Okay, if we didn't have a recession, meaning if South Africa was in a better place, maybe the focus should maybe be on this. Mm. Okay, because now everyone's doing the same thing. We need to stand out. Perhaps. Yes. Okay. All right, so that's cost leadership and differentiation as well as pricing. The last bit over here is looking at strategic objectives. This is taking the strategy one step further. What is an objective? What we're trying to, a goal, what we're trying to achieve. Yes, it's, it's a more, um, I, I would say an objective would be like a, it would be something that has to be done. It's like a task almost. Yes. Okay, goal. Okay, or deliverable. That might be even better. Okay, what are you going to deliver? What's the deliverable? Okay, that's what we're looking at there. Right, so strategy, yes, we need to have that in mind in terms of cost, leadership, pricing differentiation but at the same time we need to clearly define the objectives and that's what they're looking at here what are the strategic objectives 
So for example, in your case, if I'm thinking about photography, you might want to try secure a specific, let's say, client that might give you opportunities to open more doors. Okay, so maybe um, taking photos uh, for someone's baby shower maybe opens more doors because it might uh, there might be other opportunities in that environment so th th that's more like a strategic objective so what are we trying to achieve um, or maybe like like you said you you're getting paid for certain um, fashion shoots so you said you were at the fashion week taking for uh, photos so maybe a strategic objective there could have been well if you're taking photos at the actual fashion week maybe you could have um, taken photos of a specific designer and who knows maybe that designer would have taken you on as their like resident photographer or something like that so meaning whenever they require specific photos being um, um, made or, or taken then you'd be the one that would represent them so see that would be like a strategic objective something that has um, uh, like a like the next step okay so what are we gonna do we're gonna we're gonna shoot at fashion week why because we want to try find a designer that will be willing to take us on so that could be something like strategic so the objective achieves something more okay the I like the way they mentioned um, this progress so in other words the next step okay so what step do we need to take now that's going to lead us to the next step Okay, that's an objective, a strategic objective. Because remember, no one becomes the best photographer in the world by doing one job. Every photographer needs to do many jobs and that eventually makes them the best. Yes. Okay, so they talk about the SMART acronym. And this is quite interesting because SMART can be used in many areas, not only um, financial management or in this case management accounting but it's looking at specific okay in what is to be achieved measurable attainable relevant and time bound okay so what are they looking at here they're looking at the objective remember the objective is this the progress what is it that we need to do what is it that we need to achieve today okay, in terms of action that's going to lead us to the next step Okay, and the next step could be, I don't know, a specific client, a specific person, a specific opportunity, a specific product, specific whatever. Okay, fill in the blank. But it's something that needs to be done that's going to lead you to the next step. Okay, that would be the objective. Okay, so we need to do something before we get to somewhere else. And okay, we need to do something else to get to somewhere else. And we keep doing those things and eventually it's going to lead you to the place that you need to be. Okay, question, you know, so you're into photography. How much video do you do? Uh, yo, I don't do video at all. But, okay, that's um, interesting. Point, because but I'm, you're I'm a photographer, honest, so you uh, have an eye trying. for, um, like, the right, um, the right scene, the right lighting, the right, all of that. So, so why don't you move your business over to, or not move it over completely, but why don't you supplement? So in other words, strategic objective, maybe the objective is to have the best photos. So once we've got the best photos, we can now create the best videos. I don't know, that could be something strategic. I don't know what the goal is ultimately, exactly. but that, that could be like a strategic objective. Yes. No, but I am trying to get into it. It's just uh, the equipment is a hell of a lot more expensive than than uh, than photography equipment. Um, it it is something that I've been looking into for the past year. Okay. When I first wanted to do it, because I just didn't have a passion for it, but I've been thinking about it for the past year and just saying, well, I don't know. Um, why don't I try it out? I um, another thing that also kind of, you know, is a that I've, that I've been struggling with is when I, before I shoot, I know I, I already have an imagination of how the shoot will go or how the images will come out. When it comes to video, I, I just go so blank. I don't even know where to start. Um, but I am thinking about it and I'm trying to get into it. It's just not as easy as, as photography. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay, well, that's interesting. You know, like, like I say, it's just something strategic. Strategic meaning the next step. Okay, so something that needs to be obtained or something that needs to be achieved. And then once it's achieved or obtained, then that leads you to the next step. That's what you're looking at here. Yeah. Okay, they've given you some examples there. I'm not going to look at that one. Um, we're going to look at other examples rather. Um, what I do want to discuss now is this. The roles and the conflicts and the influences that stakeholders have. Okay, in strategy. So obviously strategy is going to depend on what? People. Yes. Okay, and people are going to have certain roles. People could have conflict. People could influence. So when looking at this unit, you'll see they've defined a stakeholder. Earlier you spoke about them, okay? Obviously, stakeholders are people like staff, shareholders, creditors, suppliers, customers, government. There's such a lot. Almost anyone is a stakeholder so long as they're affected by the business's actions or activities. Okay, so stake, just think about it as a stake. So um, you, have a, you have something to lose. Okay, you, you have a stake in that particular business or there's something that you're not going to get or something that you'll lose or, or, or not gain by... Um, the events or the activities of a business. Okay. Then they've looked at classification. I like the diagram they've given you here because they break it up quite quite well. Okay, they talk about primary and they talk about secondary. Who's more important? Uh, in sense. Okay, when looking at importance, do you agree de decision making is key, right? Okay, so yes. when looking at primary stakeholders or secondary stakeholders, which are going to have the most impact on decision making? I, I think primary. Primary, yeah. yes. Why would primary have the biggest impact? Um, because they they are the the uh, they uh, I think they have I think they have more control over the decisions made. By the, by the, okay, good. Um, so control, secondary, the, yeah, that's good. Control yeah. could be something that you could mention, but it also looks at this information. Okay, who has more access to information, the primary or the secondary? Oh, the primary. The primary, definitely. Uh, right, and what they've said here is there's a contractual relationship. That means primary stakeholders are actually, they're, they're literally, so for example, if we're talking about an analogy, okay, um, a secondary stakeholder would be someone, uh, let's say, sitting around the pool. A primary yeah. stakeholder would be someone actually swimming in the pool. Okay, so yeah, for example, okay. if someone splashes in the pool and you're outside, you can still get wet, Okay, but it's not really going to affect you, right? You're mm -hmm. not going to drown. Yeah. Okay, but if something happens in the pool, all right, those stakeholders in the pool, they're going to drown. Okay, so primary yeah. are people that actually have something to lose because there's like an existing relationship. There's a contractual relationship. Secondary is when there's no contractual relationship, but there's like influence. There's, there's like an effect. Something's going to happen. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so the textbook's very good. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time looking at this. You can probably go through this yourself, but I'm just going to summarize. Okay, so when we talk about internal, internal obviously means within the organization. Okay, so anyone within the organization is going to be viewed as internal. Okay, that's straightforward. Connected is a relationship. Okay, so if I, could this, if I could this to perhaps you, maybe be... Okay. So, sorry, what was that? Um, no, I don't know. I was going to say uh, connected. Could it be perhaps uh, your 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 creditors, perhaps? Because um, I haven't got into this. So maybe your creditors, subsidiary companies? I don't okay, know. almost. Uh, sure. Your connected would be like the suppliers, the people that are connected to the business. Um, so, for example, <clears throat> if I talk about a family, internal would be you, okay, your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, okay? Connected yeah. stakeholders would be 
maybe the cousins or the aunts and uncles or the uh, the grandparents. Okay, so they're connected, <coughs> but they're not internal. They're not. They're not like. Um, uh, they're not part of that core, if that makes sense. Is that alright? Yes, 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 that's alright. So okay. Thank you. Right, then you've got a note here about external. Also, very easy. External just means outside. So, government, authorities, professional bodies, there's a lot of external stakeholders. External, anything outside the business. Okay, so if I to um, show that. Okay, you've got internal stakeholders, then you've got the connected stakeholders, and then on the outside of that, you've got the external stakeholders. Right, so that's basically what you've got here. Okay, so you've got the core. Right, the core is key. Why? Why is the core important? So is it? Uh, I think. Uh, oh, how do I? I don't want to. I don't want to talk about uh, decision making again. But um, there, there is that. But then I think if if. If uh, uh they could, sorry, can you hear me? No, I didn't. Can can you hear me? Now? Yeah, your line's not so great now for some reason. I'm not too sure. Maybe there might be more people on the connection where you are, and maybe that's slowing yeah. you down slightly. But, but uh, just try again. Um, I was saying, I was saying the core, the core comes. Um, like I was saying, I, I didn't, I don't want to talk about decision decision making again. But um, if um, if everything is well within your business, it starts to um, when when all these other uh, stakeholders. Start to start to come in to the business um, while your business is is uh, okay. So your 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 staff, your manager are, are doing a great job. Um, I think that sends a um, a uh, uh, it, it creates a, a great environment within your within your company or within your business. Um, everybody is productive. Suppliers are able to 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 do business well with um with you, yeah. And um, obviously, then uh, it, I'm just struggling to connect it to 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 government and external. But uh, but then again, if if you're looking at uh, at banks and stuff like that, if you if you're productive, you're having a good turnover. I think they're able to uh, are better uh, are in a better position to to um to loan you money and. I think if if everything is well within the business, then moving outside of the business, um, things it's a bit of a smoother ride. It, it's a, it's a, you're able to 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 have better connections with the other stakeholders. Yes, yeah. So it it does depend on a, a lot of uh, relationships. Uh, as you said, there could be different connections between um, parties because remember, you might have an internal stakeholder that might have someone external that they're relying on or you might have a connected stakeholder that has connections internally or maybe you have an external stakeholder who knows someone who's connected or something like that there's a whole host of different um, scenarios but the, the key is looking at um, the how can I say um, what's the best of putting it um, you said you don't want to use decision making but that is probably the best way of looking at it Okay, because do you agree, internal stakeholders, everything that the business does is going to be either um, agreed on by the internal stakeholders or not. And the connected or external stakeholders won't really know what the decision was unless they're informed. Yes. Okay, so internal has a lot more, um, let's say, hands-on approach. It's, it's more, it's, it's, a, it's at a deeper level versus external, where external is more high level. Right, like government. Government is very high level, 
Right, government can't really say, well, this company, you are going to do this, this, and this, and this. Okay, government can implement policy and people can follow the, the rules and the laws and all of that, but it still comes back to the company in terms of internal. Are they doing it? Are they implementing it, etc.? Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so external is more higher level, okay, versus the internal, which is more hands-on, more uh, like in the trenches almost, okay. Right, then they give you a, a note about possible conflicts. A lot of conflicts can arise. The biggest one that all finance textbooks normally talk about is the agency problem. Okay, and the agency problem is basically a conflict of interest. Okay, that's the best way of describing it. Right, because remember, who makes the decisions? Generally internal. Okay, and internal would be the internal yeah. stakeholders. But who's affected? Well, connected stakeholders and external stakeholders. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so if I have someone making a decision, those decisions that that, in, that individual is going to be making is going to have a spillover effect on all the other role players in this particular scenario. Okay, because you're looking at agency, someone acting on behalf. Okay, it even could be the shareholders, perhaps. Okay, so managers making decisions that are going to affect the shareholders. Right, they talk about other things like laying off people. Okay, that's a conflict of interest. Right, it's a conflict. Do people want to be laid off? No. No, but it can happen. Right, people can be retrenched. Okay, there's a whole lot of, um, let's say, debate around what can happen in terms of conflict. Health and safety, that could be a concern. Right, people could be complaining about their environment. Okay, are they happy or not to work in a specific environment? Maybe they need certain things in order to do their job. Um, those are things to consider that can create conflict. Conflict is just a, um, a, how can I say, a disagreement. Okay, people not seeing eye to eye. Okay, then the last bit here is looking at uh, influence. Okay, what is influence? How would you describe that? Um, I would... Yeah. Uh, I would uh, describe influence as um, being able to uh, to to change people's minds right. or to have uh, to to get people to do, to have a different view of things. That's, <laughs> yes, that's perfect. That's a good way of looking at it. So influence is definitely that. It's it's being able to affect the decision making. That's the key. Okay, influence means the ability to affect decision making. Okay, that's influence. Okay, um, they even talk about this, degrees of power. Obviously, people with more power normally have more influence. Okay, it's not always the case, but in most scenarios, it... it that that's normally how it's viewed okay and the reason for that is yes. they can persuade people to make certain decisions they can do certain things that can that that can lead to certain outcomes okay and and as you've heard the saying um with power comes responsibility right so obviously if you're in a position yeah. of power you need to be responsible okay um if you abuse that power then that becomes problematic and that creates this it creates conflict. Okay, so people that are in powerful positions need to manage that very carefully because if they don't, then you have this arising, conflict. And no one wants conflict. Everyone wants, um, how can I say, peace, okay, or uh, tranquility. You don't want to be fighting with everyone, okay? You want to you wanna, you wanna have, um, how can I say, freedom to do what you want to do, but at the same time, you don't want to have to fight for all your um, basic needs. Okay, so it's just something to consider when looking at this, the, the, um, the decision making, the, the influence. Okay, all right, then there's a few activities there, and then we've got, I think that was the end of that chapter. Yeah, perfect. Okay, right, chapter three is a nice chapter because it's looking at this factors that influence. Okay, so we just spoke about this influence. What is influence? the ability to affect someone's decision-making. 
right so here I'm looking at factors okay so let's start off general what do you think or, or let me ask you this Una, do you influence anyone yes. do you have influence on uh, anything I'm, I don't believe so but um uh, uh I think I think maybe the the one thing that I've influenced people to do is uh in my opinion, is maybe to take uh, cleaner images, just uh, uh, without all the the the, the post uh, post production, post editing, post. That's the only thing that I feel because um, when I started, that that wasn't um, everybody was doing was adding filters. Um, everybody was adding the grain and all these, but I really loved clean, beautiful images and. I think that's where photography is headed to now as well. So okay, I think so, that that's the only little bit of influence I believe. Okay, yeah, but but I'm sure you have a lot more than what you're saying because think about it. You're the photographer, right? So you have a client. Do you influence your client's decision? Yes, uh, awesome. there, there are certain times where it's what they want, what can work or what, yeah, I think that's, so I'd, I'd have to be able to influence the decision in the sense that um, um, with my experience in, in, in that particular thing to let them know that I don't think this will work as well as you might imagine or as well as you might think. And maybe we should do it in a different way or we'll do both and see which one works the best. Okay, so um, how would you describe cases. that factor? How would you describe that factor that influences the development of strategy? So Sorry. is that going to affect strategy? Well... Where would you put it? Would you put that as external or would you put that as internal? What you're describing? Well, so what I'm describing, would I, would I put it as internal or external? Yes. I think I'd put it as internal. Yes, why? Know. It's uh, more operational, right? It's more? Sorry, sir? It's more operational more operational yeah okay the operational meaning you have the experience you've done it before so you have an idea of how things would materialize okay that's why yes. you can make the recommendation you can say well to your client well this is not going to work as well as this because of this reason and this reason and so on yes Okay, so when looking at the overview of factors, have a look at all of these. Political, economic, social, technological, competitive environment, operating. Okay, we can maybe circle that one as well. Corporate culture, HR, industrial um, re relations, organizational leadership. There's such a lot. These are all factors that influence strategy. How do you think strategy is going to be influenced by each of these? So let's choose one. Let's choose technology. How is technology going to um, affect strategy? Um, uh, for example, uh, technology, uh, everything is online now. So um, technology has improved. So you don't have to write down notes, for example. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to send letters to your clients or to your, to your debtors. You, you send emails now. So I think it changes... The, um, the 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 way that you'd be doing things and the way you do business now. So, does it make it easier or more difficult? I think it makes it uh, a lot more easier. Actually, um, uh, everything is more instantaneous than it was before. Correct. Okay, so that's just one example of something that's going to influence strategy. Okay, technology influences strategy. For example, um, when things went digital from analog to digital. Okay, those companies that didn't adapt and change their strategy, do you think they're still surviving today? No, not at all. Why not? I, I mean, they're unable to, 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 to adapt with, with uh, the changing climate and uh, the, the changing ways. That's as well. They were unable to adapt with everything being online, online shopping and their influences who, who influence you know uh, possible customers and and so on so they were unable to 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 adapt to, uh, with the with the with the changing environment yes um they ended up going out of business 
Yes, okay, so if we're going to look at one of these examples, okay, um, I'm going to take some examples that I, I found in terms of photography. Okay, so I just want to explain what happened here. Um, in the chapter here, they've obviously taken each of these and they've expanded on them. So, for example, they talk about political, okay? They talk about this as a factor that's going to influence strategy, okay? Then they talk about economics. So, recession versus let's say expansion obviously if the economy is going through a recession you're probably going to think twice before you're charging a premium for your product do you agree yes okay, see those are just some examples then we've got social social is looking at the sustainability and ethics of things okay so are we looking at the um the community's best interest are we looking at society as a whole right then you've got technology okay which we just spoke about okay we mentioned how technology things are online okay people buy um things online so hope or, or not hopefully but maybe in the future we might be able to buy more things online uh, right now certain things we can't really buy online they need to be bought in person okay but maybe in the future you can buy everything online but if i'm focusing on technology well that's changing the way businesses do business Okay, because think about it. Um, how often do you still have to go to the shops? Not as often, because a lot of the things can be delivered straight to your door, okay, with, with different companies. So technology has made certain businesses, let's say, worse off than they were before, because now if those businesses don't adapt and change, think about the malls. Okay, we've got so many malls around the country, okay? Maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the future, how many people do you think are actually going to go to the shopping mall? No, not at all. I don't. I very few because not I mean, guys. even even supermarkets, you're able to buy things online and exactly. and they'll deliver them to you now. So yeah, so it's convenient as yeah. well. So technology is a way to um, how can I say change strategy? Because if you don't adapt, as you said, you're not going to succeed. Right, and then they talk about others. Yes. Competitive environment, that's the operating. Okay, some environments are very competitive. For example, boxing. Only one boxer can win. Right, that's something very competitive. So in terms of operating, we're looking at the way they react, the way that they act, and, and how, are we, how are we going to deal with those factors. Right, so if we're looking at things from a business point of view, What's going to affect the business in terms of competition? Well, definitely our customers, our suppliers, our creditors, our labor. Okay, let's think about suppliers. How will a supplier affect competition? Well, if our supplier gives us preferential rates, are we going to be able to be more competitive? Yes. Yes, you would. Okay, if our creditors give us better terms, are we going to be more competitive? Yes, we'll have actually a lot more liquidity as well. Correct, your liquidity will improve as well. Good, yeah, awesome. Okay, then they talk about your position. Okay, so what position are you in? Right, what is the actual, um, let's say, level of quality of the product? Um, you, you might be looking at your role as a role player. Okay, are you, are you one of the big four businesses in your industry? Or are you a startup? What sort of... Um, stage is the business at okay then they talk about customer base they talk about the supplies which we mentioned and then there's a note here about the next bit okay which is internal okay so these are all the things we saw earlier remember that diagram that we saw yes okay, then we had corporate culture okay corporate culture is the uh, atmosphere that's probably the best word I can use at atmosphere Okay, atmosphere is the, the environment. Okay, what sort of culture does that particular business have? Hey, who creates the culture? Uh, I think the the, 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 the top management and, uh, and managers. Is it the top managers and managers? Which... They can influence well, I think, culture. I think, but then, sir, wouldn't you say that they, that they kind of make the culture and the people that... That um, that I suppose um, acted out of the employees or the staff of the. So so for example, yeah. if I say that this is how this is how things are are done in my business and this is the culture 
we say, you know, we we we, we say good morning um, in the business. We yeah. say good morning to all our customers. Um, as if, if I'm top management and I say that this is how we do things within our business okay, but that, and that we give it culture. out. Yes? No, that's rules and, and things that you must do. Oh, okay. okay. A rule isn't culture. Okay. You might have a culture where things are very restrictive. See, that's the culture. Okay, but yes. the rule isn't the culture. So if the rule is you have to do X, Y, and Z, okay, because you have to do it, that, that creates a culture yep. of, um, let's say, oversight or a culture of um, uh, like micromanaging or a culture of um, like, like a dictatorship, if you will, okay, for a lack of a better word, okay, versus a culture that's more open and, um, and free in a way. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, yes, yeah, it so, does. so rules don't create culture. Yes, you might have a culture of rules, but then that's different. Okay, so uh, I, I wouldn't agree so much with... Well, let me say this. I would agree that the, the, the managers, the CEO, they're able to influence culture, but it's not up to them to create it. Okay, they can okay. influence the employees. It's the employees' shared beliefs shared values they're the ones that actually create the culture yes the ceo the board of directors all of them are going to try influence the culture of the business but at the end of the day it's the people that create it okay so you can tell people to greet everyone all the time okay and they might just be doing it because they're pleasing the boss okay pleasing the ceo but it might not be a culture of the business okay okay versus a separate industry where everyone is just friendly, greeting, talking, all of that. Okay, it, it, it's, it's more the employees. Right, the employees are the ones that actually drive the culture of the business. Yes. Right, because you can have one CEO, okay, who wants to do things a certain way. And you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people, okay, employees. Who do you think is going to win? Probably the employees. employees. Because why? If they share the same beliefs and values, then this is going to become the culture. Yes. Okay. If the CEO can influence the shared beliefs, values, and, and so on, then that becomes the culture. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, I, I'm trying to lead to the example. That's why I'm going through this a bit quicker uh, because a lot of this is just theory. You can just read this. Uh, I want to try apply it. Okay, so um, the last bit here is just talking about leadership and they talk about HR. Is HR important? Yes, it is. Why? <clears throat> because they do this. They manage the employees. And we know employees are everything to businesses because employees can either make or break the business. But if you don't look after your yes. employees, okay, they're not going to be happy. They can go your, to, to the competitors. Or um, if the employees are happy, they can take the company to the next level. Okay, so it, it all comes yes. down to, the, to the, um, the people. Okay, people can either build the business to the next level or they can destroy the business and take the business down. Right, so it all depends on what the, um, the employees are, are trying to achieve. Okay, so HR manages that. HR needs to have the policies in place. HR needs to have the checks and balances in place. HR needs to screen the employees. Okay, we, we can't just have anyone working at this company. Right, people need to meet certain requirements and so on. Is that okay? All right, then we've got industrial relations. This is looking at labor relations. Best way to look at this would be unions. Okay, unions deal with the employment relationship, workplace relationships. This is looking at the employee and the employer and what sort of relationship they have. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it, um, um, how can I say, more open or more closed? Is it, is it, um, 
yeah, I, I think that's probably the best way of, of viewing it. So open open communication versus closed communication, right? Or hierarchy, right? Industrial relations. Does the do the um, do the managers and employees do they do they work together or are they working like in 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 separate uh, let's say areas? Okay, meaning. Uh, is the business more team based or is the business more individual it, it all depends it's looking at that relationship the the work pay, the workplace relationships right unions is definitely what we look at there okay why are unions so important um in the because they look out they look after the employee the employees need but i also know that uh, i think uh, Unions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they, they, like they to look summarize, the... a, a union would be like a representative. Okay, because remember, think about a company. I mean, you get very, very big companies. Okay, massive companies. An individual is literally just that little number in the company. Yes. Okay, so what does one person, in terms of influence, have on a business, on a massive corporate? Nothing. Right, that's why unions create representation so that employees' rights are being looked after. Because if companies had it their way, companies would act in a certain way okay, to generate profit but not always look after the employees. And that's, and that's something that unions try to fight for is employee rights. Okay, trying to make the employee more of, uh, or let's say more a part of the decision making. Got that? <coughs> yes. Okay. Right, and that covers that bit. Let's have a look at the example. So before I look at the processes, that's the last thing that we need to just discuss this week. Um, I want to show you the um, examples here. That, so basically what I did is I was searching for this. 15 inspiring photographers to follow on Instagram. Okay, obviously you're a photographer. So I want to see what your view is on these factors, okay, external or internal, influencing these photographers. Okay, so obviously these photographers are inspiring. Inspiring meaning they're actually influencing the work of other photographers. Yes. So this particular article was written in May 2017. We unearthed 15 creative photographers on Instagram that inspire your own efforts. Okay, the first is this photographer, Simone uh, Bramanti, okay, this is her page, or his page, sorry, it's a he, not a she, okay, so when looking at Simone Bramanti, they're looking at the storytelling first, that's the description there, okay, would you describe that as the mission? Yeah, possibly, yes. Yes, okay, have a look at following, wow. Almost a million. Mm. Almost a million followers for this particular um, individual photographer. Right, and if we look at their work, okay, let's talk about factors that influence their work, internal and external. Right, so as a photographer, being an influencer, right, are your followers going to influence your work or are you going to influence your work? What, what's the... What's the underlining like influence in terms of factors? What what factors would influence the work of this individual? Mm, well, uh, I think that suppose you want to put your own kind of work, whatever that interests you. But also, you also keep in mind that uh, what your what your what your followers uh, like seeing. So they didn't follow you, um, you know, just because. They, they like what they okay, so they do like what they see. That's why um, you have a follower, fine. But but in terms of factors, so if we relate it back to this, the factors. Yes. Um. Oh, okay. We, we need to go back all the way to the list. Okay. The the factors. What what would you say the factors are? I think it's more internal factors for him. Maybe, like you said with me, more, uh, maybe more operational. Um, he seems like 
travels quite a lot, so um, uh, perhaps maybe the his e- economic factors are a lot more favorable for him. Um, not sure, perhaps maybe imagine also okay, the social social doesn't. I don't think that that would come in much, but yeah, I think uh, economic operational. I, I want to say a bit more political, a little not in the not not in the broader sense, but in the sense that okay, but where really he comes from, he's able so to fight the stories, does. right? So I mean, have a look at some of these images. Yes. Like, don't you think these images could have been in, like, in a book? Yo, yes, yes, like, yes. Like, to me, it looks like a, like a story. Like, like someone is, a, like, I mean, this house. Like, like when I look at that, it, it looks like, like this, there, there's a story there. Like, someone wants to say something. <laughs> or tell a story. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, or yes, even yes. even like yes. this. Like, have a look at the, like, port. There's, like, a city. There's, like, um, the rays of the sun. The, the, um, or, like, have a look at this... This this couple here, okay. There's a guy in the water. The girls out there watching onto the, and they're standing on a cliff. Um, uh, here's another one, okay. Like three trees in the middle of nowhere. The moon's out. Here we have like a night scene. So it, it's quite different. But I mean, to me, these look like almost like paintings, if you will. Yes, that's true. But they're actually yeah. photos. Hey? Yes, I mean, yes, look at that. Like, this looks like a painting, but it's actually a photo. Someone took the picture. Excuse me. Right, yes. so looking at this, this is one person's account looking at photography. Let's have a look at the next person. Number two, Victoria um, Seema. Okay, this is her account. Right, this is her account. Have a look at the type of pictures she's posting. Have a look at her um, description here. I make art. She's making art. Have a look at her photos. Strange, right? Yes, yes. Very, very, very different to what we've got over here. Okay? But in terms of inspiration, still part of the top 15 list. Okay, 15 inspiring photographers to follow on Instagram. Okay, I'm not going to go through all 15. I'm just going to look at the first three. Okay, have a look at this last one, number three. Dirk Becker. Here's his accounts. Okay. Amsterdam, travel, art, design, architecture. Right. Also, very, very different photographs. Have a look at this. Look at these photos. They're, they're like, different. It's, like, more sort of arty, like, um, like, architecture and buildings and straight lines and, like, looks very mechanical. Yes. Okay, and these are the type of photos he's taking. So now, if you look at those three, okay, all very different styles of photography, but all of them are going to have factors that influence their strategy. Right, so how would you describe the factors? So let's talk more general. What factors would influence a photographer's strategy? Let's hear from you as a photographer. Uh, uh, well, for me, the the factors that influence my strategy be besides what I want to take because I mainly take portraits. Um, things that would would uh, would you know the the factors that would influence are obviously light, time of day, um, equipment, big big factor. Um, yeah, technology different. But um, in okay. the things that. I, Yes, technology. What else? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, location is also a big factor. Definitely. So See, that affects your strategy. Yes. Yes. Location and um, 
so so even uh who i'm shooting like so in the sense that um i don't i don't i uh i wouldn't shoot um you know specific skin types if i could say i i try maybe if 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 i'm shooting um a lighter or fair person i try maybe if <clears throat> if um if that is what I'm trying to 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 get out of the image, I'd probably shoot them in a in a place filled with more light that will complement their their fair their fair skin. Um, perhaps maybe uh, the, uh, is it like a juxtaposition? Maybe if you put a fair skinned person in a darker place to get their skin to pop even more. So geographical, I don't know if it's in here. That also it's a big influencing factor. Yeah, remember so, the images and overview, yeah. overview are factors. Obviously, there could be others as well, yeah. as long as it's internal or external. Yeah, yeah. yeah so th- those are the main, and obviously outfit, outfit usually also, f- uh, you know, to play on the colors and so on and so forth, complementing colors and palettes. Those are the things that would influence how I, I shoot or, or the, the, the way I shoot. Okay, so it sounds like you're talking a lot about internal, meaning things that you would do relating to external. Yeah. Is there anything outside of the internal, let's say, um, category that would affect the actual um, photographer's strategy? So something completely outside. Well, uh, Economical would would be one of the bigger ones because yes, um, if you if if um, if if you if you know if if the client if for example if you want to have uh, images on a rooftop you know um, you you kind of have to have the budget to be able to shoot images on a rooftop Correct. and have them looking in a specific way so um, that that is probably the biggest external factor that uh, that I could say so um your 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 budget going along with what you're trying to achieve yes or trying to do at the end of the day okay that's yes. a nice way of describing something that would directly affect the photographer and they are external okay so let's just put a yes. note here External and internal factors affecting strategy. Okay, there's a lot. Okay, as long as you can just think of it as, um, uh, how can I say, um, almost like environmental type things, or uh, like fact. Well, okay, the best word is a factor. So, a factor would be something that needs to be considered that's going to influence the the outcome okay the like you said obviously we can't um, shoot in certain locations if we don't have the budgets okay and then we've yes. got uh, the last place or shooting at specific times of the day threats. sorry what is that I was saying also shooting at specific times of the day the best time to shoot is either early in the morning or late in the evening so uh, late in the afternoon excuse me so uh, I think uh, when, when you said that uh, environmental yeah. As well, I think um, to make sure that there there's filtered light and there's not harsh light in the day, midday. <laughs> okay, see, those are all things that you would look at in terms of decision making. And remember, the strategy affects the decisions. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then the last yes. one is just a note about process and approach. The biggest things to take away here is the SWOT analysis. Have you heard of SWOT before? Yes, so the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Opportunities, threats, 100%. Great. Okay, that's used quite often, and it's used in management quite a bit. Here they've given you some theory, and they've also talked about Porter's Five Forces. Have you heard of that before? I think I've heard of it, but I've never studied it before. Okay, yeah. So Porter's, Porter's Five Forces is looking at the competitive nurse in a particular industry okay so let's go to the slides and all um, a textbook and just show you that okay so strategic planning we spoke about strategy and how to create it we spoke about goals and outcomes previously okay um, I think this is quite good because they talk about steps and we're looking at planning 
Right, earlier you defined strategy. What did you say strategy was? Just give it to us again. Uh, I, I think I said the how-to. Yes. Or the how we're going to... It's not quite the how-to. It's more than just that. It's what? Oh, man. Don't remember what I said. Okay, it's the um, strategy. The goals and... Remember, the strategy is the approach. Yes, the okay, approach. It's, it's, so when you talk about how-to, the how-to could be the... The, the detail the strategy is the overall goal so if the goal is to um, let's say tire your opponent out okay before um, yeah. fighting them at the end if we're looking at boxing um, that would be like the approach the approach is to um, to 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 go the long term okay the long run okay rather than just trying to 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 go all out in the first few rounds okay but strategic strat strategy strategic planning is focusing more on creating that that like to do list or creating that that approach that that those those um, those principles if you will okay it's it's the it's the ability to create a plan almost okay so this is looking at the strategic strategic planning okay so strategic planning is looking at SWAT and porters. Okay, why do we need both? It's because it's information. Okay, both give information in order to make decisions. Or we'll both uncover uh, knowledge slash info. To make decisions. Right, and that's important. So when they talk about the steps, they talk about situation. Okay, then they talk about the target, and then they talk about the path or the proposal. Right, so I, wanna, I want to relate this to something that you might do, okay, as a, photo as a um, photographer. Okay, so let's talk about strategic planning for a photographer. Okay, so number one is situation. Okay, so can you describe a situation in photography? Mm, um, wow. Okay, let me talk about this uh, time of day. That was a good example that you used. So you spoke about shooting yes. early morning or shooting late afternoon. So the situation yeah. could be, okay, it's midday. That's the situation. <coughs> okay, they talk yes. about this. Seeing it. Okay, so you've seen the situation. It's 12 a, not 12 a, 12 p.m. Okay, PM, midday. Yes. Right, so if you know it's midday, okay, you need to now do a photo shoot. Okay, yes. what's the target? Well, give me a, um, okay, portrait. So now we're, we're shooting a portrait, someone's, someone's uh, a person. Yes. Okay, so that's the situation, it's midday. The target is you need to do a, uh, a portrait. Okay, what is your proposal or path going to be? As in, how will I execute it? Yes. Because see, it's oh, about well, seeing the problem. It's, it's seeing the scenario. Yes. Thinking about it and then drawing. Drawing could be like the conclusion. See, another way of looking at this could be your exam. Okay. In the exam, they're going to give you a question. Okay. That's seeing it. Mm. Okay. What are they testing? Thinking is going to be, well, what is the approach? Okay. Or what is the... Um, okay. The... How can I say? The constraints, maybe. Okay, the constraints. What is given in the question? Okay, given. All right, and then you need to design a workable method to achieve the goal. Right, so the situation, midday, 12 p.m. Target, you need to do a portrait. So what's your proposal or path? Well, um, I would use a... It, it's, it's, uh, it's called um, a reflector disc. It's got um, it's got a diffuser in in the middle. So um, what I would do is I would have probably an assistant holding it over their face um, mm -hmm. to cover the light to to, to to almost to shade them from the from the sun, and uh, in that way I'd be able to take a portrait. Okay, in midday, in the broad daylight. Yes, yes. It actually, what's even better about it is the fact that. It, uh, it uses that same harsh sunlight. It basically diffuses that same harsh sunlight and it gives 
a more even tone um, kind of uh, kind of light situation. Okay, Mid-day, so would I you say that's the right this, path? Is that going to achieve the goal? Yes, definitely. Okay. The best See, that's important. workable so, solution. Um, a lot about strategic planning, another way of looking at this is problem solving. Yes. That's another way of looking at it. Okay, you're thinking of, 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 of a strategy and you're going to plan. Okay, so strategic planning could also be viewed as um, a way of problem solving. Okay, because things aren't always as we expect them. Okay, there are always problems that arise and it's your ability to Id identify the situation. It's your ability to target and think about the situation in order to have the right action. Okay, to do the right yes. thing. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so that's the see, think, draw approach. And then let's <coughs> talk about SWOT. Okay, I'm glad you're familiar with its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat. That's good. What, what I do want you to do um, as, as a bit of a like side exercise or activity. Okay, um, next week, yes. I want you um, to give me, okay, a short SWOT analysis, okay, on your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats as a photographer. Okay, so someone in that industry. Okay, you're obviously operating in that industry. What are some of the strengths? What are some of the weaknesses? What are some of the opportunities? What are some of the threats? Okay, they do give you an example in your textbook, which is fine, but again, it's relating to business and it's general. Okay, it's looking at things that aren't specific. Right, so for example, here they talk about strengths. You'll see all of them are very general okay having people that are competent having people with qualities okay that that uh, and having the right behavior okay having team spirit having committed employees having processes etc having resources now, it's very general none of this is specific i mean this you could say for any business okay same thing with weaknesses the ones that they give you here are very generic okay so for example insufficient research high employee turnover see they're very generic i mean this you could say for any business right all businesses would have these um, weaknesses okay i want to be a little bit more specific okay so i want you to take your own um, um business or or your own like career as a photographer and i want you to do the analysis strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats okay because if you can apply that to something that you're you're familiar with then you don't have to study all of these points. Okay, then you're you're um, you're understanding why, rather than just remembering lots of points. Okay, so what is a strength? How do I determine what a strength is? What is a strength? Um, why? What? Uh, when do I see my strengths? Okay, that, those are all things that you could look at. Okay, so when have you seen your strength? Okay, maybe you're uh, you're strong in certain areas. Okay, maybe you're weak in certain areas. I don't know, okay, but I want you to try that uh, for yourself as as a practice activity looking at this. Okay, opportunities also, the ones here are quite general. They talk about things like deregulation. Obviously, if government deregulates certain industries, that's going to create opportunities. Okay, obviously regulation isn't always good. Regulation is good in some instances, but also uh, bad in others. Okay, it, it can hamper growth and creativity okay if everything is being regulated right then you've got threat strikes unrest technology etc right so again very generic i want you to be a little bit more specific so when when you talk about your strengths weakness opportunities and threats uh, i want you to apply to to your situation okay right but we'll discuss that next week you, we'll, we'll start with that just a bit of a recap Moving on to the next section, uh, you can give me your view on what your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats are. Okay. All right, then the last bit is the porters, and they talk about analysis. Okay. Why is analysis under planning? Well, I think you, you have to analyze uh, the situation so that you're able to plan or plan how you Correct. So, do you agree that analysis creates what? Uh, uh, 
Say that again. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Okay. Uh, creates um, a platform solution. A platform of what? Platform solution. Sorry, the audio is not so great. Unam, just uh, say that again. Or... <clears throat> I'll say the platform solutions. Okay, I, I can't make out. Can you type it quick? Just type it in the chat. I lost the audio there. You know. There seems to be a bit of a break in the audio now. What are you talking about? A platform for what? Uh. Oh, solutions. Okay. All right, a platform for solutions. That's correct. Um, it, it's actually more the information because... Analysis means what? Collecting data. Information. Collecting information, yes. Okay, and analyzing. Analyzing means um, number crunching, ratio analysis, etc. Okay, see, all of this you do later on when we look at the number crunching, okay, the, the actual workings, okay, calculations. Right, so if I'm looking at strategic planning, the planning involves analysis. It involves getting data, getting information. Once you've got data and information, you can then do this. You can analyze different situations. Okay, so you could look at situation A or number one, situation two, situation three. Right, and then those situations are going to have certain outcomes. Right, can we make decisions based on those outcomes? Yes. Yes, we can. Right, because now we know what the different situations are. Right, then they talk about strategic formulation. Okay, obviously you need to create the strategy, you need to implement it, you need to check that everything is working. Okay, so evaluation. Implement, evaluate, form. Okay, so form, imp so create in other words. Create. Execute slash implement. Once you've implemented, you then need to test or evaluate. To see is it working right so I'm sure you probably do the same thing when you take photos right um, you you test the lighting you see what the different um, maybe uh, environments are maybe you choose the best place um, then you execute you implement and then after you've implemented then you need to check well did it work maybe maybe it didn't maybe and then evaluate okay yeah. All right, so that covers that, and then we just have a Porter's Five Forces model here. Okay, Porter's is important, and the reason for that is Porter's is used quite a bit in identifying competition. Okay, things that affect your external parties. Okay, so what is going to affect external parties? Well, new entrants. Okay, so let me talk about photography. Is the threat of new entrants high or low? It's quite high. Why is Everybody it high? has uh, a. Um, Why is it high? Well, it's uh, it's quite high because um, I think uh, more more people are getting entry level entry level uh, uh, cameras. Um, they're gonna get to a point where you know uh, it's gonna be cheaper to just get a camera for yourself that stays at home than to or uh, inquire for services of a photographer. Okay, that's good. Um, so it's become accessible. Um, and uh, cameras, uh, cameras are becoming not cheaper per se, but uh, 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 people don't, don't, don't see the need to buy these big, huge DSLR cameras. If they have a point and shoot or an entry-level DSLR, they can do the same job, then eliminates the need for... Uh, for professional photographer. Okay, so yeah, so definitely new entrance, high, okay, anyone can take photos. Okay, obviously you need to be good to be a photographer, but I mean the entrance, okay, remember entrance is looking at people coming into the space. Okay, you can have lots of people coming in, yeah. a lot of people can be bad, but there's still new entrance. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 
interesting. Okay, so it's looking at the um, the 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 competitors. Yes. Okay, so is it easy to get into that industry or not? Okay, obviously it, it, it's a lot easier now with technology as well. Because think about it, most really state-of-the-art cell phones have really good camera taking or picture taking abilities, photo taking abilities. Okay, the newer yes. phones have uh, like 15 megapixel cameras that can actually take really decent photos. Um, uh, so almost anyone can actually enter that market, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. In terms of bargaining power <coughs> of the buyers, who are the buyers? The customers, right? Uh, yeah, your customers, yes, yes. So how would you describe the bargaining power of your customer? Can they or do they have lots of leverage? Mm, not quite, but um, you know, for for because I still shoot lower end, so um, so lower end. Actually, the first thing I ask is, what's your budget? So I can do for you as much as your budget will take you. And if maybe uh, on site, I'll probably um, I'll probably do more, more just because of the fact that um, you 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 know you you took the effort yeah. to 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 have a budget. So yeah, so bargaining power of buyers. It 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 so it um it's it's there because um obviously I'm not going to turn down um income so it's just about what can what what do you well the way I approach it is what do you have and then I look at okay what well, with what they have what can I do for them and then from there I'll even go as far as to say you know what, I'll do more for you just for the sake just so that you have a complete product because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, just put my name on it, so yeah. it's better when you have a complete product than something that's there. Yeah. And, and also, would you agree that um, the customers that you're dealing with, um, it, it's quite subjective as well, because people are either going to love the picture or not, and it, it's it it's yes, a lot of yes. um, it's a lot of emotion as well in in some instances. So bargaining power could be quite yes. difficult, or let's say problematic. Okay, because in photography, uh, there could be maybe an emotional attachment to it, perhaps. Mm. Okay, I mean, think about think about um, taking photos for someone's wedding. How often do they get married? Well, once, right? I yeah, mean, they're I only going to have one wedding once. day, right? Yeah. So now, in terms of bargaining power of the buyers, that's their only wedding day. So if we're looking at their ability to negotiate... Um, it could be seen as quite high because obviously many photographers would want to take those photographs of that particular wedding, maybe. Yes. And also, depending on the buyer, who's the buyer? Is the buyer a celebrity or is the buyer someone unknown? Does a celebrity have more bargaining power? Uh depending on how you look at it, I'd say that they kind of do yes, in of a course. way because um, if if I'm taking images for a celebrity, that opens doors to to more possible clients as well. Yes. Yeah, so because they imagine could, if you had to take photos yeah. for a, a, a big South African celebrity. Okay, so obviously currently um, there's quite a lot of news about um, Bonang and how she's launched a new app Oh, yeah. um, and she's got a book and all of that out. So um, if you were approached to do photographs for Bonang, or let's say if you were asked to apply to, to, to be Bonang's ph photographer, obviously the bargaining power there mm. in terms of the buyer being a celebrity is quite high from their view or from their side. Yes, yeah. that's true. Because they're going to want yes. the yes, best. Sir. And they're not going to want to maybe pay as much, perhaps, or maybe they will be willing to pay. But there's lots and lots of competition for their business, perhaps. Yes. Okay. Uh, what about bargaining power of suppliers? What would you say? Good or bad? High or low? Mm, um, it, it varies, but I think it's it's it's, uh, it's still low than it is high because yeah. in some cases, you know... Um, 
you know, you, <laughs> you know, some people they charge what they charge, and they're not willing to to compromise. But are there which, a lot of uh, they, Not really, hey. I mean, you've got like no, the I big think, brands see, like so the Canon with, and Nikon and um, uh, what are the other big brands? Canon, Nikon. What are the others? Big brands. Um, there's uh, up to uh, okay, what it, uh, well, there's there's Fuji, okay, uh, there's Fuji, Sony, three. there's um, there's um, I just forget what they call they're up to something, they're up, up to Optimus or something. Okay, I just four. don't know what they call. Um, what else other than Nikon, Canon? Yeah, those are the the so main things. Like, that... There's only really and then, four, right? Yes. So yes, bargaining yes. power of the suppliers quite high then if there's only four main producers. Obviously we, we mm. have the other smaller brands and the brands that aren't as popular. But if we're looking at like professional photography, the bargaining power of the suppliers is quite high. Because professionals are gonna to want yes. to use the best brands. Yes, yes, actually, that's yes. So I was, I was looking at it from a, from a point of view as a... You could look at it as low. If you went with yeah. low, then what are you describing? Well, uh, I mean, when I, when I was saying low in terms of a photographer, um, it's if you, if you charge a specific price, there are quite a few photographers that, that only charge that price. So, and uh, also with, um, when you look at, when you look at, at um at the photography industry right now there uh, like we just mentioned there's an influx of uh, new entrants so there are many photographers that are coming into the industry supplying images at a lower cost at a lower price so someone might want unam and unam might be a little too expensive so they'll probably look for someone who's just as good as um as him probably charges a lot less so it's very hard for you to always stick to your price for pricing um i don't want to say strategy but to your yeah. pricing to your pricing format because um you don't want to forfeit the possibility of of income so it sometimes it varies some people don't mind paying people they do mind paying so yeah, it's interesting hey uh, like do, do you have a specific pricing yes. model or do you literally just going according to budget so what is your budget and then you do as much as possible uh, or do you have like a like a specific pricing well this is the cost and this is the cost take it or leave it type of thing well at first at first i did have that yeah. um but now what i do is uh, with lower end i just ask for budgets like okay. what what how much do you how much do you have? And then sometimes they'll say, "Hey, I think it's a low, low. Just increase it by so much, and then we can, we can, we can work on that." Um, but for for corporate and you know bigger brands, it's uh, by quotation. So there are just specific things that need to be paid for. You know, it's like um, I I need to I need to to cover my op- operating costs yeah. or my fixed costs before yeah. I can even attempt to do the work so, yeah, so it, that's the that, difference so you're between talking about that as being a factor to consider okay would you say there is a threat of substitutes then because what you're looking at in terms of pricing is obviously compared to what you could get elsewhere right so how would you describe the threat yes. of substitutes substitutes being them taking them taking someone else as a, as a no as in as Instead a pos- of taking a photo, taking a video, a substitute. Yes. Okay, oh, remember we're looking at a substitute oh, well, for the product or service. I, so something that could yes. replace it. Would you say there's a high level of threat of yeah. substitutes? Mm, yeah, well, there, there, there is, actually, if you could say, like, because people, people are, are, are leaning towards... Um, yes, they want images, but they want images and videos. Yes. They want, in some cases, they want videos more than anything. And the images are just supporting. So they'll say, do you take videos? Uh, yes or no. And sometimes you'll say no, or you'll say yes. But, but then they'll say, I want more video than the images. Okay. Um, so they want less images, more video. Because video tells, I, I suppose, a better story. It communicates better. People can watch it. Yeah. To watch with their families and yeah. So, 
would you say the threat of substitutes are quite high then or quite low in the photography industry? Mm. It's, uh, I want to say it varies because there are some people who just want images. There are some people who just want video. Yes. Um, in specific cases, like I said, very few cases where people want them both. And when they want them both, the chances are they want more video than they want images. Okay. So it just it very very it varies per per person. You know, some people they have no care for video. Some people have no care for images. Um, I have no care for. I mean, I have very little care for video. I have a bigger care for 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 for, for images. Yeah. So I, I think it's very it's very per person specific or client specific. So it I can't say that your um, uh, images of photography is going out of out of fashion and it's videos that are really really peaking at the moment so yeah so it's it, so you, you you could probably say there's actually no real substitute then for a photo because a photo is a photo what else are they going to yeah. do are they going to ask for a painting <laughs> <laughs> which is easy yeah you that's can't true. really do that right that's quite so true, so. in terms of the threat of substitute so there's there's no real no real substitute for a photo or a video okay I mean it's literally do you want the picture and you can't really like for example like you can't really substitute a photo for, for anything else I mean you can get an artist to paint yes. a, a portrait but that portrait's gonna take several hours maybe even days to do to get it lifelike and perfect yes. versus let's just take a photo yes. and then print it out and, 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 and put it on the wall Yes. Yeah. So, so I think you could motivate for either or. Okay. Maybe you could vote. You could motivate as video. Video could maybe be a substitute for photos, and photos um, not really a substitute for video. But um, I definitely think video could be seen as a substitute for photographs. Um, but then, as yes. as a a photo, you can't really say, or uh, as a video, there's no real substitute for a video. How are you gonna how are you gonna capture yes. moments other than filming it? Maybe a podcast. Okay, yes, so motion, maybe yeah. a podcast could be a substitute, but that's not a real substitute though. Because a podcast doesn't provide yes. the same value as a video. Yes. Yeah, so it's an interesting one. Okay, and then the last one is the middle there. <coughs> rivalry among existing competitors. Okay, so how would you say the rivalry yeah. is in the ph photography industry? Do you mm, have rivals? Is it really I think, like, uh, like... No, not at all. <laughs> I think uh, we... One thing that that uh, that we've... Because I, uh, I don't shoot alone. Most of the time I shoot with either assistants or other photographers. The one thing that we've... That I think we've all kind of agreed on is that rivalry has, hasn't taken us anywhere because um, in the industry that we're in, most jobs, and this is just... Um, I think it, it's it's a, it, it's common uh, in most industries that most of the work goes to you know our white counterparts because um, in advertising the, the 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 advertising industry the you know the big corporates or the big people that that own advertising companies are, are more likely to go for their own kind so familiarity they they know who they know. The guy from sure. high school or something like that, yeah. or they know him from school or from varsity. So, okay. yeah. um, and, and for us, the rivalry has not assisted us. So, the more we work together, and the more we refer each other for jobs yeah. and call each other um, for 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 things, the the better off we are. The, I remember when we first had the that kind of meeting, we we likened it to how Jewish people would probably go for uh, a probably give a job to another Jewish person or a Muslim person or probably employ another Muslim person because that what they try to do is they try to have a circulation of the income circulating about four to five times within their own kind of group or in, own people before they take it outside. So okay, but there's no, not that's much... That's a generalization. Yeah. Eh? So you can't always generalize that like that. You, you need to be careful when you do like generalize like that because um, it, it might be difficult to substantiate that um, 
uh, like based on let's say analysis because remember we're looking at what here the analysis porter's fire forces so yes. it's something you could maybe consider as as your view okay um uh, believing this is um something that is a reality because maybe you've got experience in the industry and and you've seen it or you've experienced it and, and that's something that 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 has affected your analysis okay but the most important bit is the actual risk is the risk high or low yeah. what would you say is there a high risk mm. of of Yes, there is. Say yes. Yes, there is. A risk. Yes. If I'm being yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a risk. Like like I mentioned so uh, earlier, is that um, most uh, most clients okay, let me ask they, you this. they want. To... Okay, so yeah. even even though you are supporting uh, supporting everyone else, so there's assistance and and all of that other stuff, right? Is there still yes. A rivalry or a risk of rivalry in that industry. Yes, there is. Okay, and and yes, would you say is. is that is that very high or very low in terms of being um, prevalent in the industry? Mm, I think it's pretty high. If if um yeah, it is quite high. I mean, okay. they would rather go for someone else. Um, or if you no, don't remember, rivalry uh, is not it, about it, the like, choice of photographer. Do you, do you agree? Yeah. Rivalry is not about choosing the photographer. Rivalry is about the competition between the photographers. Yes, yes, yes. There, there, there's lots of that. There's, uh, the, the only thing that, that differentiates is probably the style of photography. Okay. Otherwise, that's, that's, as, that's as far as it goes. So, okay, so like I said, I'm, I'm more... You differentiate yourself. Okay. Yes. Okay, yes, so that will come back to what we spoke about earlier, which, which was that differentiation part. Yes. Okay, where we had the pricing strategy versus differentiation strategy versus cost yes. leadership. Yes. Okay, see, it, everything yes. comes back to the strategy. Mm. Okay, because do you agree, if your strategy is to be the best and the most well-respected photographer in the industry, do you agree you're not really going to focus too much on rivalry because you're going to want to be more collaborative if you want to be the best and yes. most liked photographer? Yes, sir. Versus if you want to be the best and you're going to stomp on everybody to reach the top. Does that make sense? Stomp on nothing. <laughs> See, it comes yes, back to what we spoke about earlier. What's the strategy? What's the goal? What's the purpose? Yes. Okay, so from what I've heard from you, it sounds like you're more collaborative. So you're looking at um, helping people, they're helping you, you're helping them, a more a more collaborative setup where rivalry is not too much of a factor because remember, you're doing it for a yes. different reason. You're not doing it to be the best photographer. You're doing it to give people that can't afford good pictures, pictures. Yes, Okay, so see, it, all, it always comes back to what we spoke about right at the beginning, which was the strategy. Okay, is that all right? Yes, that's all right. Okay, so we've covered that. We've covered that. Barriers to exit, barriers to entry. This is the bargaining power, then the threat of substitutes. Um, then I think we've covered all of that. Yeah, we have. Awesome. Okay. So